You are watching the latest edition of DBE TV News. We come to you every Friday on the DBE TV channel 1 to 2 and open view at 12 p.m. and on the Department of Basic Education's YouTube channel. Welcome. I am Tsoho Hajo Moachi. In our top stories this week, the Basic Education Department says it's ready to administer the 2022 National Senior Certificate. Provinces host pledge signing ceremonies with the matric class of 2022. Deputy Minister Dr. Regina Mahaule launches the AMAZE video series. The management of Med Science and Technology Conditional Grant discussed the way forward in the Western Cape. The Basic Education Department says it's ready to administer and monitor the 2022 National Senior Certificate examinations. English Paper 1 will be written on the 31st of October, marking the beginning of the final exams for the matric class of 2022. Briefing Parliament's Portfolio Committee, the Basic Education Department said all systems have been put in place to ensure the November examinations run smoothly. The committee also heard that there's been a gradual increase in the number of full-time candidates sitting for the final exams as compared to previous years. We have 753,000 candidates writing this year on full-time basis and we have many more that are writing. So uh, it's, a, it's a big year. We have seen an increase uh, by 22,000 more candidates that will be sitting for the exam this year so the number has increased but we've also expanded our capacity to be able to manage the numbers in the exam centers in the marking centers uh, as well as uh, our storage facilities which have had to accommodate more uh, question papers and uh, we've also increased the number of our invigilators our markers uh, as well as our monitors on the ground because we want to make sure that the exam and its integrity uh, remain intact at the end of it. The department has also urged learners to maintain on, to remain honest while writing their exams and to report any irregularities they may come across. This is a big year. We have our cohort of learners who have gone through a lot of challenges in the past three years. Uh, it's been a long and difficult journey coming here. Uh, we're a little bit nervous, but uh, it is to be expected. The system is ready. We hope they are ready as well. Uh, we will be monitoring uh, the examinations to see how things are going to go. But we worry more about their mental health uh, because they have really suffered more than any other class before. So we have done a lot together with provinces to make sure that they get the support that they need for them to face the exam with confidence. So. We wish them the best of luck and advise them to stay calm. Always ask for support and help from their teachers or anybody else for that matter who is able to give them the assistance that they require. It's a big exam, but we hope they will do well. The Eastern Cape Education Department has urged the matric class of 2022 not to cheat or cause any irregularities during their exams. The province held a pledge signing ceremony where learners promise to be honest in their exams and ensure they report any irregularities they come across to the relevant authorities. This year we have 98,400 uh, 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 learners in public schools as well as about 18,000 uh, uh, 631 learners in uh, uh, independent schools uh, that will be writing examinations in the province. So we have more than 100,000 that will be writing examinations in the province, which is more than what we had in the, in the, in the, in the previous uh, academic year. We have also circulated uh, the, the, the guideline uh, for the management of irregularities in the examinations to avoid the experience that we had last year where certain schools were not resulted and that has affected uh, learners big time and it has also, also affected the overall the overall uh, outcomes of the province 
because those learners and those schools that were affected were uh, amongst them were high enrollment uh, uh, schools. Uh, so there's a big chunk of learners that were not resulted. So we are now working on that. We have issued that. Disani Kolisa, a principal at Mazizini High School, says they have set themselves a high target for the 2022 matric results. He, he aims the, the Mazizini Senior Secondary School this year is aiming at 100% pass rate. Uh, senior responsibility, they oversee achieve the, the target because we are the provincial champs of Eastern Cape for 2021. Uh, we were awarded at national uh, for e national education excellence awards which we became position two at quintal two schools so this year uh, we're aiming at 80 percent bachelor passes as we have achieved 78 percent last year uh, say say we can't check them as easy but uh, we don't produce just quantity we're concentrating on quality now uh, we are doing away with e, 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 e pass a higher certificate. So we have motivated our learners are ready, our teachers are ready, but Kakul Kakul, let me appreciate the hard work done by my teachers. They had dedication, sacrifices, extra classes, evening classes, Saturday classes. Those teachers are, 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 are food soldiers that are doing it for the school, for the community. The HOD went on to speak about the provincial education's readiness for the 2023 academic year. We have issued a guideline in March for the preparations for, for 2023 admissions. And that work has already started. Uh, schools, uh, districts, as well as at the provincial level, we do have the admission committees that have been set up to manage the admissions as well as manage the adjudication of appeals. We are also working on the, um, uh, uh, the system to track the, the admission data. We are working on that as well to ensure that the admission data is credible and is able to assist us in terms of the planning. Lastly, we have also issued orders to all the publishers. Uh, there are very few now that have not been given orders, but I think about 48. Uh, of the all of the publishers have been given. They've already started to deliver in the warehouse all the textbooks. Uh, at the beginning of November, we'll be distributing those to, to schools. Same applies to stationery. We have uh, issued the orders to all the manufacturers uh, to start delivering in their local warehouses where they are allocated schools uh, to deliver. So we're hopeful that the first week of, of, of November, we will also be starting with the deliver of stationery, with a view to ensure that by the 15th of December, we are done with the deliver of stationery. The Limpopo Education Department says it is confident there won't be any cheating in this year's exams. The province also held a pledge signing ceremony for the candidates who will be sitting for their National Senior Certificate from the end of this month. Limpopo MEC Mabunga Lirule Ramakanya says the learners in the province have committed to ensure their exams run smoothly. We are committing because the pledge that we took is not very difficult. It's just a normal technical process that just seeks to remind all the learners in our province that uh, they do not need to cheat because it, it's a shortcoming on themselves. But also the pledge just reminds all the learners that uh, the day of examination has finally arrived. And I like just one more emphasis on the pledge. It says we will cooperate with the invigilators because that means smooth running of the process and also for us as the planners when we say we have got everything intact it means then all of us inclusive of the learners who are now called candidates we are together meanwhile the kwazulu natal education department says it's confident learners will do well in their final exams mec mbali fraser says various measures were put in place to assist these learners who were the most affected by the COVID 19 pandemic they were in grade 10 when the hard lockdown hit the country. Fraser has urged parents, guardians and communities to support the learners as they embark on the final stretch of their basic education careers. We had a number of uh, 
initiatives that we had as the department in Wazulu Natal. We had winter classes, we had the summer boot camps. Again, they've been in and out of schools even during weekends in ensuring that they cover all the time that was wasted during the floods and we are convinced that with everything that we have done, they are in a good position to, to, to embark on the examination. But again, I think the emotional part lies with all of us, lies with us as educators, the parents of at home must make sure of that they assist us, they give them support, they give them time to study, and on top of that, the learners themselves, we've been talking to them, we had sessions with them, and the other part that I, I think we can't reach, for the past uh, weekend we had the prayer uh, examination weekend, as cases in. Fortunately for them, they were getting all sorts of encouragement from priests, from uh, motivators. I think they are ready. They are. We, we have done everything in our power to make sure that we prepare them for the examination. When we return, we find out more about the AMAZE video series launched by the Deputy Minister. Presidential Youth Employment Initiative. Stiago Cafe Lam Segazi. Vu Masigu Chile Lengama Gama Agu Faneleo. Vu Masiti Unguto Tintala. Um Zelawako Ubonagele. Women Yaganjemi Tatu Zelwe. Zotuka Ez Nyin Kubo Zen Nesho Ebe Ziko. Zazi Buza Ubangu Mafiki Zolo O Tenina Lo Usuke Wabangunda Bam Lonyeni. Zotuka i account is a banga zolucha, kagungeni chosha hoto, enva gweminyaga yenzala no vala lega gwama tube nasho. Botu kaba sali na matre kokazi, be piwi male songwa yonga bazukuluana. Bangena o plastic ibe venki lebe pupu mangoni noni. Aba ten wenge chosha etsi se kunomi pele yako ipungleyo. Bacho baze kon da bazalu kubinene ogu sala gusolu la si zo chinja ngogu si kumse kuba gufunega si viwe gakse si zo zongi tanga asi pensi sangengu ku ozenayo get asa na gweli pondo na gwizwelonke. The basic education department together with the health and social development departments and other stakeholders gathered to discuss the plan to bring an end to teenage pregnancies by 2030. This as concerns remain in the increase of teenage or learner pregnancies in South Africa. Between January and July this year, 1,297 learners between the ages of 10 and 14 gave birth at health facilities in the country. And in the same period this year, 39,863 children between the ages of 15 and 19 gave birth in South Africa. We can deal with service delivery platforms. Somebody can take the educational component, but we can still contribute there. But are we really going to make a difference in teenage pregnancy? As I'm standing here, I remember exactly the same day last year, I was doing a presentation about teenage pregnancy at the Sheraton Hotel. Numbers didn't change. Nothing moved. We still have this. Five years ago, that was in 2017, 2018, I did the first presentation about pregnancy pregnancy at the Department of, of Education. Nothing moved, things got worse. What are we investing on? We have policies, we've tried to say, if they fall pregnant at 18, let's take the age to 12. Then when they fall pregnant at 12, we'll take it down to 11. And then when they fall pregnant at 11, we'll take it down to 10. It will keep going. We'll take SRH to school. We'll give contraceptive uh, packages. My colleague here, Tembi, 2014, she was running around trying to change the mindset, expanding the contraceptive mix, but we're not making a dent. Multicentral approach. 
teenage pregnancy is a symptom of a dysfunctional society and not a health crisis. Meanwhile, the Basic Education Department has reiterated the policies in place to assist learners who become pregnant while at school. And through the support of the UNFPA and UNESCO, we are capacitating our learner leaders, uh, those that are in the representative council. Some of them, you might have seen them earlier here, COSAS and others, uh, to make sure that uh, they are able to advocate for these matters as well. In fact, we are moving towards the elections for the learner representative council. So as part of the orientation, we'll take them through this policy as their responsibilities as well. And uh, supported by USAID, we are also uh, working together to identify ambassadors that can help us to uh, communicate these messages among learners also supported by UNAIDS, youth organizations in five provinces have been taken through sessions to create awareness on what role they can play to make sure that we see the results that we want. We are also expanding and strengthening our learner support agents. This is something that we do in every school. Uh, we have these young brigades that are in schools uh, they are not really focusing on curriculum, but on all issues affecting learners in schools. Not every province is able to provide for these young people, but we believe that it's a good start because it's something that we really need to see happen. And here you can see we deal with all sorts of issues, violence, uh, psychological abuse, robbery, physical assaults, corporal punishment, and uh, bullying. And we are also, as a department, Working with our sister uh, departments and other stakeholders, uh, working very hard to strengthen the psychosocial uh, services that are clearly needed in our schools. Um, our educators as well are being taken through a whole range of workshops to make sure that they understand what their role is. Mshanga went on to explain the importance of comprehensive sexuality education, scripted lesson plans, which have been added to the curriculum. We will continue to implement the comprehensive sexuality education, uh, even against the wave of opposition, but it has died down somewhat because people are starting to see the light that we come with good intentions. We mean no harm. Um, what we've also done in terms of communicating this, at least from a communication perspective, is to say, if you propose CSE, uh, give us your alternative. And more often than not, whatever that, that they bring is something that we've already tried and didn't work. So we say to them, we would like to see a campaign against teenage pregnancy, particularly in those instances where there is statutory rape cases. We want to see people opening cases on behalf of these children. We don't see it happen. So that's what we do. We take the fight back to them and say, if you are complaining, what are your initiatives? We need to protect the children. We always say that child protection is everybody's business. And we hope that that particular messaging will assist us. Deputy Minister Dr. Regina Mahaule has held the AMAZE video series as an additional learning tool to strengthen the work done by the Basic Education Department with comprehensive sexuality education. Dr. Mahaule launched the video series, which is a comprehensive sexuality education series empowering the youth. AMAZE harnesses the power of digital media to provide young adolescents around the globe with medically accurate, age-appropriate, affirming and honest sexuality education they can access directly online, regardless of where they live or what school they attend. The series also strives to assist adults to communicate effectively and honestly about sex and sexuality with their children and adolescents. The value and impact of the digital space cannot be over stated and DBE wishes to leverage the various gains that it has seen on its own social media platforms including the DBE TV platform to provide its beneficiary with base, uh, beneficiary base with access to information. We know that this presents a key opportunity to reach more of our learners, hence our excitement when our partner 
the United Nations Population Fund introduced us to the CSE AMAZE video series. AMAZE harness, harnesses the power of digital media to provide very uh, young adolescents around the globe with medically accurate, age-appropriate, affirming, and honest sexuality education that they can access directly online. She added that extensive work has been done to review the AMAZE series to ensure it is aligned with the South African context. My team has done extensive work in reviewing the AMAZE content and in particular the content that was customized for the South African context. They have noted its alignment to the International Technical Guidance on Sexuality Education. They have reviewed its alignment to the CAPS and scripted lesson plans and are satis uh, satisfied that it is a good uh, fit for our beneficiary base and have appro approved about 30 videos in this regard. We have further noted that the Ministry of Health, uh, Health BY's platform, which provides sexual and reproductive health information to its users, has also integrated selected AMAZE videos as a source of content on key points. This is pleasing in that it's an indication that our young people are also being exposed to same content on multiple platforms and research supports the principles of consistent, uh, pervasive, and persistent uh, messaging as a contributor to the behavioral change. The department says the series will supplement the work that it is doing through the comprehensive sexuality education. We are so excited today to say the day has finally arrived where we are going to uh, showcase the work that has been done. This is work that is going to supplement and complement what we offer in the curriculum in life orientation and life skills. And thanks to all the partners that have supported us, uh, West Wind Foundation, UNFPA, regional and local, and all our CSE partners in the country. This work would be possible if it was not possible. Thank you. After the break, we found out more about the placement process in the Gauteng province. Research is showing that NESFAS supporting students on average are performing better than non-NESFAS supported students, which is also something that is very important because it says this almost complete wraparound program by government of NESFAS students has become very important. Also, the change from NESFAS being a loan to being a bursary has also made a very big difference because it has now even opened access to students, even in those institutions that were unaffordable in the earlier phase of NESFAS. Universities that have been more expensive, like your University of Cape Town, Stellenbosch, Wits University, Pretoria, there's been a huge increase of the numbers of black students from poor families directly as a result of, of NESFAS and the kinds of difference that it has actually made. The Gauteng Education Department says it is still sending out SMSs to parents who use the online application process for grades 1 and 8. Placement offers will be made until the end of November. Briefing media on Monday, the 24th of October, MEC Matume Chilwane said so far over 87,000 learners have been offered places in grade 1 and more than 71,000 in grade 8. Over 173,000 applications for grades 1 and 8 are yet to be placed. Chilwane has promised that all learners will be placed but urged parents to accept the schools they have been offered. Parents delay. Uh, parents delay. They get offered these spaces. Uh, you know, and, 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 and most of the time is that when they go and apply, you know, they want a particular school. And then they just, uh, because they need to put three, they just add another two. But their hearts are set on one. And you get that when we place them, we place them on the other two, not the one they wanted. And then they want to appeal and say, no, but this, uh, this is not what I wanted. You know. And that's what is working the system currently, that learners have been offered places uh, and we are waiting for parents to accept. 
But then on the 24th, today, we are beginning with automatic placement because we've given them an opportunity to accept either or. And if they are not going to accept, we're going to place them. And currently we're uh, beginning the auto placement process uh, of, of, of these learners so that we can begin to free up spaces. Because when, you give, when we're offered you two spaces, uh, the system knows that th those two spaces are occupied. So for us to free the other one, we need to place you. So we're placing learners to free spaces so that we can continue to place uh, the rest of the, 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 the learners. So Late applications will be open for a month from the 20th of December 2022 to January next year. Uh, we know that some parents are worried, maybe some have missed uh, the window. So we will open for late applications as well from the 20th of December this year to the 20th of January next year. Uh, so for parents who might not have been able to submit, uh, uh, who have not been able to, to apply for their, for their children. As you know that Gauteng, we are, every year we are dealing with a lot of inward migration from other provinces in the main uh, and also uh, uh, our neighboring countries as well. So we do have that process as, uh, as well that comes in. But, we'll, but these are late applications. And these late applications, uh, unfortunately, don't have the, the uniqueness of you being say, able to say, I want a child in a particular school. Uh, here, you'll be, you, we will be placing your learner. And we will do our best to comply to ensure that we don't place your learner far from you, a, a residence, far from your residence, uh, far from your workplace, if there's a sibling, we will be able to we'll do our best to comply with those uh, uh, processes, but you will need to bear with us at that point. Leaders from various provinces descended on the Western Cape to discuss the management of the Math, Science and Technology conditional grants. The aim of the meeting was to discuss matters relating to grant performance as per grant framework, share reports from the various provinces and plans for improvement of the grant implementation. Issues of compliance with business plans and payment schedules were also discussed. Uh, it's where we share good practice about how we manage conditional grant and how conditional grant in the provinces is benefiting learners, especially around the issues of improving performance for mathematics, science, all the MST related subjects. And the good practice actually assists all of us to be able to understand how different provinces are spending the grant and what problems do are they experiencing in relation to how general management of the control grant is. And these kinds of meetings, they are held almost monthly, if not quarterly, but they do assist all of us to share those good practices. And us being here right now, we've learned very well from other colleagues from other provinces, and we've debated and shared and given advices to each and every one of our colleagues to be able to say when they get back to their provinces, we are all there. If there are contracts that we can use, as yeah, that's in depend point. upon and other provinces as well. So those colleagues can always tap into us and we can also tap, tap into them to be able to ensure that conditional grant is well spent, but not just spending it, but ensuring that it serves the utmost purpose of improving learner performance in the country. Meanwhile, the Mpumalanga Education Department explained how the MST conditional grant has been of assistance for learners. With the introduction of coding and robotics, we have managed through the grant uh, to provide our pilot schools with coding and robotic kits and uh, which include laptops, data projectors, so that uh, we are able to see a successful implementation of the project. But we've also started in the province an e-learning project for grade 12 learners where we've managed to contribute to the provision of tablets to learners and laptop to teachers uh, as a strategy to improve uh, grade 12 learner performance. Um, so we very much appreciate the support uh, that DBE is providing through the MST Conditional Grant. That's how we end this bulletin this week on Channel 122 on Open View and on YouTube. Before we go, let's take a look at a video of motivation for the matric class of 2022 from Free State MEC, Tate Mahwe. Uh, 
My name is Tate Mahwe. I'm the MEC for Education in the province of the Free State. Simply the best. Uh, the class of 2022, uh, we wish you all the best for this year's examination. We really want you to calm down, collect yourselves, and be very confident. We believe that you spend so many hours preparing for this time, and therefore you can't give up now. This is the time where you are supposed to pull all your strength and make sure that you succeed. I believe in you. I know you are going to succeed because indeed you are simply the best. Go for it, black boy. Go for it, black girl. You are simply the best. You'll make it. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Thank <music> you.